Blood upon the wall, can you see it? As the people fall from an AK 47, spraying down the hall. Oh, this screaming, this act is so inhuman. This, this must be a living in the nightmare. Oh, yeah. If you can see what I see, yeah, we're living in the nightmare.
I'm on YouTube right now. We're running a Zoom meeting, so we can get the audio as well as video. We'll go ahead and uh, share out the YouTube as well. So this is hot. So now we're trying to get me into YouTube Premium. Cool, but I already subscribed too much. We love two of my guests in already. A lot of Callaway is also here. Sam, got three. Go ahead and share this out. But uh, we speak right quick, and then I uh, we'll jump right into our roundtable discussion, man. So uh. What's going on, everybody? This is KC, kicking it with KC Show. And uh, we got a great topic here. First off, I want to say thank you for all that have joined here, the live chat room, xyradio.com. We, um, we've been doing our thing for almost, I think, five years or so. Started with me and just my show and expanded to a full network. Uh, a lot of offerings as far as the network, you got a lot of different shows that you can get, um, a lot of content as far as uh, social culture and um, relationship topics, um, politics, sports talk, you get music. I mean, it's a lot of different things that we that we offer. So, like I said, I'm happy for those who have continued to support us. And you know what I mean? Just 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 basically share it out and just you know, just be a listener. If you one listener and you just been listening and you listen to one podcast or mine or whatever, I really appreciate that. So that's a good thing, is that we're able to grow and continue doing what we're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and create that. I already got my my links, my, my stuff shared here, I'm gonna go ahead and post it to my little Facebook groups, and then we're ready to get started. I got a couple uh couple Facebook groups so we ready to make this thing happen but I want to thank the guests and their time people who come in here to basically share their time with me I'm excited to really get through this topic because for the most part this is something that's been plaguing us for a good while and there's no answer to it we really don't know where we go from here, but it's it's just something that we gotta deal with and make adjustments. And I don't know how long it's around. I don't know if there's an answer to it. So that's the main thing. I wanna get these educators on. These are my friends, family, associates, all kinds of people, ex squad family. Got a group of people who are in their walks of life. All right, so right off the bat, let me say thank y'all for joining. Kicking it with KC Show. Uh, I'll go around with the uh, squares we got here on YouTube. First, at the upper left, is my brother a day. You, you you may have seen one of two of my brothers, Rasan. They're twins, identical twins at that. So um, we actually we're like the Brady bunch. We kind of uh, joined together at seven eight years old. So when we were younger, I couldn't tell the difference between them. So it was all the hairstyle and all that stuff. So. Now it's easy. <laughs> Other people still can't tell, but right now y'all are like uh, T and Tamara to me right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> funny. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's my brother day upper left corner. Going down, we got we got Shamika. She is my sister, my sister in law, because I got my other brother Cole. Known a long time. That's my brother, and this is his beautiful wife. She's a uh, rep. Oh, oh, let me let me let me back up. A day's representing Newport News, Virginia. He is a um, a, 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 um, what's the what's the what's the exact title? Assistant principal at uh, Woodside High School in Newport News. All right, and then we go down. So we got Shamika, which is like I said, a beautiful wife of my brother Arlen, and uh, she's representing. Is it Mecklenburg County? No, I'm in Cabarrus County, which is just a county over from Mecklenburg. Okay, so you're in Cabarrus. Okay. Mac, and what's your right exact title? Um, I'm a school counselor at a middle school, C.C. Griffin um, STEM Middle School. 
Okay, awesome, awesome. Coming around underneath me, we got my sister Low. We got Talisa Tab, wife of my uh, brother in law, JT. Y'all know Big John. Um, and you represent, uh, what's the name of your school? I forgot the name of the school already. I'm in Cobb County. You're in Cobb County. Mm -hmm. and, she's, and I she's teach at uh, Clarkdale Elementary Clarkdale, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right, so Clarkdale, she's representing Clarkdale here at Cobb County. It's Delisa. And then coming underneath that, I got my man. He is an squad affiliate, represents the HBCU report. <laughs> coming out of DeKalb County. And uh, what school are you at, Rob? Uh, Columbia High School. Columbia. And we know yep. Columbia because our grandma's down the street from Columbia, represent Columbia High School. And you teach... Broadcast video production. Broadcast video production. All right. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. So we got a nice little cast. We got uh, probably one or two people that'll join us afterwards. But right off the bat, I want to say welcome. Thank y'all. Um, first off, let me ask you this. We're going to talk past, then we're going to go present, then we'll go to the future. So past, when this thing actually happened, and I'll go around, we'll start with a day. When this first happened, and the reaction of the school, Woodside, as well as the county, I mean, not county, the city, Newport News, when this thing actually came out, COVID, and nobody really knew what it was, What? how did the schools adequately, adequately prepare for it at that time, do you feel? Uh, well, it really wasn't anything we could do to prepare. It was more of a reaction. Um, I can just tell you in general, the school, just not our, just our school district, but the local school districts, they basically shut down. Um, we since, you know, said that, you know, schools closed for right now. Uh, and what we did was not just our district, but districts local around us, mm -hmm. um, central office administrators, um, you know, they met and they talked with principals and they kind of came together to say, okay, we're watching the news. We're getting guidance from our state superintendent. Um, and we'll give you information from there. In the meantime, uh, we immediately started making sure that everyone was linked in virtually. Um, we started using Google Classroom was the quickest one. Uh, all of our teachers had access to it. and. They formed their classrooms um, and we started reaching out to families um, the following week after we got guidance. And so we just immediately started, you know, I guess um, changing up, going to virtual, trying to make sure that people were connected and checking in with families um, and being more concerned about people's welfare first uh, and their, their, their emotional mental state right. um and and trying to get connected and listening to uh guidance from the state and of course the national cdc because all that influences of course we saw it influences education okay all right shamika uh same question um and on your end being in the counseling and what do you find as far as challenges what kind of challenges did you have at that time as far okay. as the, the students so our shutdown was similar to newport um beach schools it was a um a friday the 13th and then they told us that on the 16th which was a monday all personnel had to come in but the students wouldn't so that we could have an emergency meeting to talk about how we move forward and to gather any work um, that we could do from home. So starting March 17th, we went remotely. And um, pretty much we kind of had a proto, we always have the crisis protocol in place. So mm -hmm. we kind of used that and just modified it where all my teachers contacted their um, homeroom classroom and we did a spreadsheet. So on the spreadsheet, it was asking if students had access to a laptop and okay. access to internet. And so for all the students that didn't have it, then that's where my 
County jumped into place and our buses, some of our buses for our rural areas became hotspots. And then we had a couple of days built in where parents can come in to pick up laptops if they needed that, as well as being a counselor, we have a food pantry. So we had to put together prepackaged bags and put it in our car line um, and ask families as they rolled up, did they need any food at the time? Some were very honest and said, no, please give it to those that are more um, in need. And that's what we did. Um, as a counselor and just like any other teacher or educator in the school, um, we thrive when we are face to face. Okay. Um, and we're interacting with our students. So where my challenge came in was, is because I'm a counselor, we have confidentiality. So I couldn't even make contact. I can make contact with the parents and I can offer the resources um, that we put together on a list, but I could not have any direct count contact with my students until my um, student services department gave us consent to do that and then right before we did facetime or we did a phone call um we had to read a confidentiality blurb um because if we were in my office my door would be closed it would just be me and that student you know um nobody could hear our conversation whereas now i had to let them know that i was in a secure place i had on my earpiece couldn't nobody hear them and then i had to ask them the same but it was kind of I got used to it, but it was uncomfortable because even though a student told me that they were in a room with nobody else, who's to really say that? So I really couldn't talk to my students, the ones that I was able to reach out to the way that I normally would in my office. Okay. Um, and a lot of them didn't want to do FaceTime. They wanted to do um, over the phone, which was fine with me. And I, I got a Google number, um, but it was hard to read if they were going through anything because I'm always in the hallway during every transition. If a student is coming off the bus and they're, you know, crying, you know, you could tell something's wrong, I can read that and, and definitely intervene. And then for those parents, um, those students that I knew had socioeconomic issues within the home, it was nothing I could do because I was not face to face with them. So working from home i felt like i worked even harder than i did when i was in the school <laughs> yeah, yeah. because of course i'm not tech savvy thankfully my husband's in the it so when i was having <laughs> those issues he could jump in and help me and that kind of came easy but i felt like i was working even harder because i was trying to see what um technology i can use to reach my students so a lot of stuff i had to really utilize my website i put up emojis i did all kind of resources um put up social and emotional stuff you know um meditation i mean i was putting it all out there and then having to get my teachers involved because they were able to do the zooms and the micro teams and putting that information out for me um so it was really challenging very very challenging um and i just hope that i did enough okay all right so lisa tell me a little bit about your challenges and creativity having to do alternative methods there yeah i'm just kind of piggybacking off what's being said like uh, you know like uh shamika was saying i i know that it was probably hard for counselors to kind of get their information out because I can just, you know, just thinking about our school counselor trying to get uh, information out to the kids or come up with activities or and having us to post them for the kids, not being sure whether or not they are safe, okay, you know, needing to talk to someone. All of those things come into play. Mm -hmm. um, going back and thinking about, you know, that same, around the same time we did that last day of school for us was March the 13th, okay. um, I'm just thinking about how that day went within a matter of minutes, 30 minutes, we had to come up with a two week lesson plan to turn it so it could be posted online so that it can, you know, those, you know, to send home and get gathered, just your whole day went from uh, teaching to uh, preparing packets and sending things home with kids who had internet access or who did not have internet access. We had to find all of that out. 
within you know just just a matter of it just it went just the day turned into that it went from um a full day to an early release day it just a lot of things change uh within a short period of time and just having to prep so fast right. uh weeks in advance um changing what you already have planned and then having to try to teach those things that have not been covered or um you know reteach things that need to be taught and trying to come up with creative ways to do one-on-one -on -one lessons on zoom or one-on-one -on -one lessons over a phone call is it's kind of hard but you, you know you're trying to be as creative as possible and uh, i just found that um a lot of the prep there may have been some things in place but i found you know think that it was a lot of reaction and uh to to what was going on and, and i felt like we didn't know enough uh information um and so we just had to just go you know just go with the flow um and just really not enough time to to prep like you needed to to get things out and not having everything that we needed um to take home you know a lot of things we did use online i am thankful that the district does have uh, in place office 365 that's free for right. um you know the entire district and the kids who know how to access it from home instead of us using it in classrooms so we use it in the classroom and i use it a lot because um, i find that if i teach them how to uh use technology a whole lot more than they're a whole lot more prepared when they go to middle school when they go to high school even on to college because it's, it's college career readiness is what i stand to say we're supposed to be teaching or how we're supposed to be teaching the students right. so um it it you know it was a lot it was a big transition <coughs> but the, the, the largest uh problem that i noticed too is not having everyone uh log on so you have a class of 20 children but you only have five or six that are actually working what wow. can you say about the kids that are not you know not getting on to do the work or you know logging on later so you have to come up away you got to record your 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 lessons and you have to call and you have to try to figure out if this child is already behind and then we're learning new material then this is a whole nine weeks that we have to teach online the end of this the end of the school year that's critical and so, you know, I'm thinking this child is going to be behind because they don't have these skills on top of the skills they're already lacking. So it's, it's, it was a, it was quite uh, worrisome. It was a lot of um, being on the computer all day sometimes for, uh, you know, when you don't, when you set a session and the kids don't get on when you ask, and then you have to do a whole nother meeting in the evening when the parents come home. Right. Because you're teaching the children and you're teaching the parents too so that's true a lot of things like that going on and um i found it you know it really wore me out but you know i can't say that um i would want to do it again but if i have to if we got to then this is what we have to do but uh it's 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 really t it was really tough to transition okay wow all right rob you're a communications teacher so this transition might have been up your alley as far as technology and, and, and you know, actually going this way. You, you might have been prepared, but I'm not sure how the students were. Tell me about your challenges. Yeah, that's you're absolutely right. I was prepared, man. I, I brought the green screen home. I brought my light so I could do virtual lessons and all of that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But but the, but the God honest truth is, is that we have, uh, when, when it comes to the technology in the school, in my classroom, all of my kids, like I have MacBook, MacBook Pros in my classroom that the kids work on. Okay, okay. so on the on the MacBook Pros, they have access to everything that I had access to, but but the computers that they have, the Chromebooks that a county issue, they don't have any of that technology, nor do they have the capability of of, of even downloading that kind of technology to the computer. So mm -hmm. so it runs in, it runs into an issue where the best they can, you know. The, the, the ones that have the, the Chromebooks, because it wasn't even mandatory this school year to even ha that even have one. Like last year, they made it mandatory. This year, it wasn't even mandatory. So a lot of kids don't even have them. So the ones that do, they could get on Google Hangouts and and go into like you could do uh, 
the, the virtual, like go through Google Classroom and go to the Hangouts, and then they could they could go in, they could log in that way. But then they banned, they stopped us from even having video, uh, you know, video interaction with the students. But, oh, wow. um, but I think my biggest my biggest frustration is because uh, you know I'm hearing what everybody else is saying, and and and, and it was the same. We scrambled to try to get lesson plans together. We, I mean, because they told us on Thursday we went to school that Friday, and then they were like, "Yeah, well, y'all had thirty minutes to get two weeks of lesson plans together." So, okay. you know, it, it, you know, so we all, I think everybody probably went through that part. But for me, the, my biggest frustration was the fact that they didn't hold the kids liable all the way through the end of the school year because mm. uh, the deal that we had was if you were satisfied with the grade. That, that you had as of March 12th, then you didn't have to do no, you, no more schoolwork. Right. You didn't have to do right. any more schoolwork, right? Which means that really and truly, like if I had a 70 and I was just cool with it, like just think about how much more, how much stuff you didn't learn or how much more stuff you could have learned had, mm -hmm. had you checked into the class. But, uh, but so we had that part. But then, but then we had the you know the students that really needed the, the uh, log in because basically all the work became was extra credit at that point because we could not give them a grade that that would hurt the the, the whatever grade they had on the twelfth. All we could do all we could do is increase the grade. So mm -hmm. if, so if, so if they had a ninety five in the class and they made a 94 on assignment, that's gonna have a negative effect on the grade. So basically, <laughs> if you pass, you got 100. If you didn't pass, you got, you know, a 50 or whatever, but nobody got zeros, okay? So, yeah. so you know, that created a whole situation, but the kids that, that were failing prior to, like that was the opportunity for them to be able to catch up because all they had to do was turn in the work and as long as they made a 70, they were gonna get a 100. and. Yeah. And and they didn't they didn't take advantage of it. And so, you know, I had one student that waited all the way until the like the day before I submitted grades. They emailed me and asked me for makeup work, and I was and I had to let him know. I was like, look, all this work that was that I gave basically it was makeup work, and 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 he did maybe twenty assignments that night, and it still wasn't enough pass. But I mean, I graded them for him just so for his peace of mind. I still graded them. But, you know, even after the fact, school was over with. Like, grades submitted everything. I had this kid emailing me, and it was like, again, <laughs> if you had taken advantage, had you taken advantage of those six weeks or five weeks, whatever it was, of me just giving free work, yeah. just free work. And all I did was a five-question worksheet that was movie-based, right? You can just Google that and get the answer, right? Right. So so the ones, the ones that needed it didn't take advantage of it, and, and the ones they thought they were good they didn't they checked out so that I mean that's the issue in itself when we do go back to school yeah, you know yeah. when we finally when we finally see them face to face again it's that's that's gonna be the problem because you know you got kids that go that's, that's gonna do digital learning this semester coming up and you won't see them until january and by then they won't even know how to do school they won't know how to do school anymore you know and that's gonna be a whole problem right there that, that. totally agree yeah, that was my actual. That was actually I agree. actual. Uh, that was actually my next topic was the the, the grading requirements that you led into, Rob. So y'all can actually talk about that. Well, Rob is right on point with that. Um, it's sad that um, our students, as well as our parents, weren't held to a high standard, but we were. We get hit with everything. Mm -hmm. If they don't do it, it's our fault. And um, my district did what um, is called PASS, P19, W19. So if you were okay with your grades, you would get a P19. And if you didn't pass, you would get a, double night, a W19, which the W19 would alert the next school or the next grade that you are not performing at grade level. Mm -hmm. um, and my teachers were so mad that I got a lot of calls um, because although I'm a counselor for my students, I'm a counselor for my teachers. Okay. So I was getting text messages. Like, Can you talk? I need to vent. And they were so mad because it was like, why even hold school if you're not going to hold them accountable? 
And so exactly. it was pretty much if in our county, if a student did not complete something, even third quarter, now we, we're at the end of third quarter. So third quarter, we shouldn't even went back to third quarter because third quarter was over within a couple of days. But they decided to open third quarter up because of COVID-19, which I thought that was ridiculous. But anyway, if a student did not do, had missing work or scored less than a 50%, you could not give them that grade you had to give them a 50% or exempt them. And the part that really ticked off a lot of my teachers were, you have students who work very hard, but still may not do as well, but you know you give them a little bump because you know they put A plus in for effort. So whereas my students who just didn't give a care, they didn't do anything, once the teachers exempt or gave them a 50 for the, the work that was missing, now their grades were higher than the ones that put forth the effort. So our teachers were really mad about that. Um, and it, it just was heartfelt because when the kids found out, and you know, when one child finds something out, it spreads <laughs> like wildfire. Um, they went and told everybody. And oh, yeah. so now students are not getting online because they know it's not going to count. Wow. And it's just it's just so unfortunate because it's like how we're setting our kids up for failure. Yes. They are not going to be ready for the real world when they get denied um, an interview for a position or they get fired because they didn't do something. We mm -hmm. are setting them up for failure. Right. I agree wow. with you. I agree with you on that. Um, I think it was um, it, it made us I know for me, it made me feel like it was a waste of my time if I spent you know, hours upon hours trying to grade work, whether it was digital or whether it was something they submitted to me online, they, whether they uploaded it to me and then I check and I talk about it, put notes on it, and then I can't count it worth anything. If you made a 30, I had to give you a 70. Mm -hmm. No nope, lower than that. And, you know, I just counted it unfair for the ones that were logging on. And those were my ones that, you know, my honor students, my target students that they didn't need to do it, but they did it anyway. And then the ones that really needed it weren't putting in any effort at all. Or, you know, I've, I've heard some of the, you know, some of the greatest excuses out you. <laughs> and then, you know, I can't, but you really can't say, well, is, is that true or not? You know, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how somebody broke in your house while you in there and stole your what? Right. And, like you hadn't done no work. And you, you know, you you sending me a message three weeks ago. I'm like, school over with, baby. It's <laughs> you know, so it's like, what can you do? I, I I don't know. I just found that part, and I and I'm just thinking if we have to start, all have to start virtual, virtually. Yeah. Um, what where is the accountability with the work? I mean, how can I honestly say that you did it? Mm -hmm. Did your parent do it? Or did your big cousin do it or big sister, big brother? I, I don't know. And, it, and that's going to be kind of hard to gauge. And I really don't know how we're going to tackle that. I think my biggest concern with, you know, accountability as far as the academics is, what solid program are we going to follow? Or are you going to allow every different school to have or in every teacher to have their own way of approaching the curriculum? And when you do that, no one's still in the same place. Because if I get a little giant that was taught over here and your own, you know, two other standards that I haven't even touched or I've, I'm gone through all of them and they, they don't have any of those skills, then who's to say they're still not behind? Because to me, essentially, the kids are coming back to school nine weeks behind. Yeah. From I and then, to... of course, when it was over, they didn't want to look at another computer because they were... Mm -hmm zoomed out <laughs> they were zoomed out loomed out and any <laughs> type of uh digital format that we use to talk to the kids they were teamed out we use all of them and so, oh, it's you know those are those are some of the concerns i have about you know just the academic portion of it you know the accountability and what what are we going to do to make sure ensure that you know the work is really being done, and it's and it's kind of hard to gauge because I know I'm a hands-on, visual learner myself, and I like to see, I like to 
I mean, it has to be in front of me. Or and I know the small younger kids, they need it that way too. As, okay. Uh, <laughs> all the things that they do now, especially on the computers and with these games, and they like all the virtual things, so they want to see, touch, all of that, and it's going to be hard just to say, I'm I'm teaching you, and, you know, I can put up a screen and say, you know, oh, I'm still loading, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got I, I'm a not even there. there. Right. We got a you lot know, of that. They smart. <laughs> yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. No, I wanted to mention too. We we face the same challenges, um, especially with grading, um, and you know our our school district really had to set some guidelines and communicate with the public and the families about what the stipulations and guidelines were. That helped, but at the same time, they were still vague. They were vague enough to leave some wiggle room in there, and and just like. You know, I heard up here, you know, in, in our district, you know, we, we had to look at that third market period as well. Uh, and we had to extend that as well. Um, teachers gave incompletes for kids that didn't show mastery. They were given some extra time during fourth market period. Not a whole lot, but a couple weeks to enrich the grade. If not, then they got incompletes. And then, you know, depending on how they did fourth market period, then if you know, it was a situation where they, if they got a failing grade because they just did nothing, they were failing third market period, failed again, then, you know, it, we had to put them in a situation where they were referred to have to go to an enrichment course or summer school to have to make up that that credit. Uh, and, and just like I heard, you know, we also made Chromebooks available to students who didn't have it those who didn't have hot spots um, so that they could get access. We gave that information. You know, we we also did the food pantries. We also did the packets. Um, my biggest concern is, uh, like you said, the, the accountability. You know, our, our district is moving to a another virtual platform called Canvas. Um, and that in itself i mean I, i'm just past couple of days i've been doing training on it my teachers will be doing training um and it's an excellent platform and within it there was a lot of um uh i guess tools and things for good instruction things you can link to um that our central office is going to link to our state standards to make sure stuff is consistent with the curriculum and, and lessons and those things will be some of that will be preloaded, so that'll help with the teaching part. And But the biggest thing is I'm looking at, okay, the CDC is coming out with these guidelines, and we, we've heard some of that stuff going back and forth in the news right. about, uh, you know, whether it was too stu stuff, tough, excuse me, or expensive. But the big thing is, okay, how in the world am, uh, are we going to be doing social distancing uh, when we have overcrowded classrooms. Well, How are we going to be doing social distancing when buses are overcrowded? Because, you <laughs> well, know, I live hold, in a... Hold I, that thought. Hold I, that I mean, thought. I'm not in an urban area, hold, hold but that good thought. Lord. Hold that thought. That's, that's actually a future topic. That's a, we, we're actually going to talk about that. We're actually going to talk, talk about, about that. that right now. <laughs> Who are you telling? You're trying to get into it. You're trying to get into it. <laughs> I'm ready trying, to go. He's he trying to get into it. Let me. So let yes. me tell you about the. Let me. Let me ask you about the summer prep as an educator right now. I'm gonna get into that. And then we're gonna go into COVID nineteen preparation or your whatever your district plans are. But let me ask you about summer preparation right now. As far as now, you have this stuff going. You know what you know, what the cards are. Actually, it's an unknown set of cards, but. How are you as far as preparing for the upcoming school year? And then we'll go into it. Well, guess what? And I'm sure, um, is it Talisa? Talisa, yes. Talisa, uh huh. And a day? Yes. I think what I'm about to say, you all can agree with me because you threw your hands up. We don't know <laughs> because our governor has, has given us plan A, B, and C. That's right. July 1st, he was supposed to tell us a little bit more about what he wanted the schools to do, but he held off because 
the numbers and the data are still going up. So he said he didn't want to prematurely announce something and then have to jump back and say, okay, we can't do that plan. So right. he pushed it out a couple more weeks. How many more weeks that is, I don't know. But he said he wanted to follow the data. So okay. right now we're at a standstill. Nobody really knows what to do. But we, I know on Facebook, there's a lot of um, educator platforms that I'm a part of. Yeah. And um, there is some, I'll just say there are some people who are ready to go back, which I don't agree with that. I mean, I don't disagree with that because in order for me to really do my job, I do need to have face to face with my students. However, I don't want to go back if the numbers are creeping. Yep. And like a day said, and I know you said it's for the future, Kesey, yep. but <laughs> our classrooms are overcrowded. So That's how true. are we going to do six feet or more apart and then get the students on the bus when the buses are overcrowded? Yeah. So we're at a standstill. Would y'all agree? Is your is your county at a standstill that y'all don't know what you're doing just yet? I'm gonna call it a plan, no plan. Let's call it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm gonna call I it like that. I mean, my answer is just. Uh -huh. <laughs> but um, <laughs> in all seriousness, um, I you know my my new thing is i'm watching every school board meeting y'all have it because you on zoom let me zoom in and find out what's going on because you know by the time you know um our uh principal or call, she's been calling meetings and it, and it's on our off contract time but i zoom right on in on that too because i want to know what she's saying in comparison to um what the school board has said. So right now there's been a pushback of when the kids will start. The kids are not coming back until August the 17th, I believe it is. But we still go back July 27th. Oh, wow. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Well, see, our, our and, students were supposed to come back at the end of August. But they made I go back a little bit earlier because I have two roles. I only Not only do I have a role as a teacher, but I'm ASP director. But after okay. have a whole nother area that I'm I have to sit down, plan out, and figure out how in the world am I gonna work this when the superintendent says ASP has to start or after school has to start the first day of school. So that's a whole nother something wow. I have to put on to figure out for my workers and for the children that stay. And mm -hmm. you know, and how we move about the building and where we're gonna be and emergency plans and all this other stuff. And I'm just thinking, um, you know, preparedness of going back. I don't know. I mean, we did some survey. They surveyed the parents and they surveyed us. And the only thing that stuck out to me on the survey was, if school open back opens back up, what are you going to do? Are you going to return? Are you going to retire? Are you going to resign? Or are you mm -hmm. going to take of asking that you may not have enough time for. So what you gonna do? I right. can't retire because I, I need some more. I need got a few more years. Can't resign because I need my M O E N E Y. Right. Uh, I can't take the leave of absence. So that only leaves me with. I gotta fall back in there. So I need to find me some kind of bubble suit, some kind of something. To you need a hazmat suit. I, because <laughs> I, I essentially I have no choice. But then I have my concerns about you know, the safety, my safety and coming home every day. Right. Yes. And and and, and the safety of my family, you know, right. you know, I, I don't I just don't know. And I mean not not just with the kids, but with the other adults in the building. I don't know what you're doing. You That's know, yeah. so it's, it's it's a lot of concerns that I have. And now the, the big thing was at first they weren't requiring masks. They said that they recommended but they're not required. Then it's changed this week. That all the masks are required, as they see other counties are requiring that you uh, that they have masks. Well, still, I mean, I could just only imagine what that mask is going to be. <laughs> you right about that. So, oh, uh, yeah, right. uh, it, you know, it's a lot, and with the numbers increasing, and and not only that, um, my my other concern is cleanliness. I know that the custodial staff can be stretched. Um, they can be short staffed. It can be a lot of things. So you find yourself 
cleaning your own room when they clean your room? What if what if Miss Susie come in and decide I'm just gonna vacuum your carpet today, or she decide I'm just gonna sweep, or I'm just gonna taste? Or I'm not gonna do nothing but empty your trash. Mm-hmm. But the stipulations for the level of cleanliness has really changed. Right. So I myself. I was doing it anyway with flu season. That started this, you know, we'll do it anyway. But a few few years ago when it got really bad, I took my thermometer to school. I was checking temperatures. And if you had a <laughs> a, a 99, you got to go. <laughs> it's it's just, it's things you have to put, you, you feel like you have to do money, other money you feel like you have to spend to make sure your kids and your classroom environment is, uh, uh you know, well enough. Well, to, right functional for for your you know for you to teach and right. it's outside of just worrying about having to teach you got to worry about is it, is it this is it that you know on top of everything else so i i really don't know uh about being as ready but it looks like we're being pushed to be ready i don't know if we're being guinea pigs or what right 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 so rob rob had to drop he had to pick his daughter up from dance Shamika, you know that, but dance. Yeah, I know that very well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so y'all jumped into it. Let's go ahead and uh, let me find out what what is your county, city doing as far as the upcoming school year? What is the plans? What did they say? I'll start with you. Well, okay. I can, I can kind of, I can't tell y'all what the plan is because they haven't published it, but Whoa. I can give you an idea of, what I strongly suspect the scenarios may look like in the fall. Um, Either one, uh, because of the rises in cases, because people have lost their minds. They think it's summertime. Everybody can just forget that we're in a pandemic. And we see the numbers climbing. Uh, So either one, things will get so bad that they shut down stuff again and kids won't be in school. That's one. Uh, We'll be back to the virtual. The other is schools may do a hybrid of, of virtual and face-to-face where they have to stagger kids every other day. Um, so you have less kids in the classroom and less kids on the bus. Right. Uh, and then they're doing some virtual, some not. And then you have another scenario where parents may be, you know, some districts may be forced to give parents an option on whether they want their kids to go full virtual um and you know that to me seems like a more realistic not not just that option but those scenarios look like what could possibly happen um coming up in the fall but we still don't know um Hmm. because stuff changes every day even during this since march the rules and the situations have changed almost every single day um and i don't want to get into politics but (laughs) it bothers me it really bothers me that i see people more concerned about money and economics versus people's health and welfare and safety Mm -hmm. um you know that that really concerns me and you know and and i say that and i preface that to say At the same time, you know, our kids are very important. They need to get their education. Uh, And us as educators are doing the best we can to try to reach them. Uh, But the realistic part is, even when they're in school full time, we're dealing with not just them getting their education. We're dealing with teaching them how to survive. We're dealing with their social emotional growth. We're dealing with trying to teach them to become citizens in this country. And a lot of times because educators see, let's just be real, we see a lot of kids more than their parents see them. We're, we're, we're filling in a lot of the gap of things that usually in, in traditional years ago, they learned at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the, the tough part is now that they're home and they're home more uh, and parents are trying to work or trying to do what they can. You have kids more off to themselves or they just in the neighborhood doing whatever. Right. And it's a whole different dynamic. 
I've had kids, you know, since they haven't been able to interact with their peers like they did at school. We have rising cases and people aren't talking about it of kids being depressed, kids, um, you know, wanting to commit suicide, kids that are not feeling this virtual learning or kids that just don't have access because their parent, their, their families just don't have it, or kids trying to do all of their work on a cell phone. Oh, you man. know, let's just be real. This is, this is not just an education. It's an economic thing. It's a, right. Right. it's a home thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, if I want to get to my my background in, in, in faith, it's a spiritual thing too. That's true. Yeah. And the the suicide has already been on the rise for students without this pandemic. So I'm sure it has probably not doubled, but tripled. Um, right. Because I've seen the, the, the self-harming and the depression and all of that. And it's it's alarming um, because when I was growing up, you didn't, you didn't hear a lot of that. But mm-hmm. now our kids are very, very depressed and a lot of anxiety because we're putting so much on them. Yes. Um, and I could have a whole other topic on how much we're testing them. And that has caused a lot of anxiety and depression. And then also you got parents who are forcing their kids to take honors in AP, which I'm like, come on, you know, let them be kids. Yes, we need to be able to guide them, but we don't want to put more pressure on them than they have to, than we have to. So um, to get back on topic, um, like I said, my governor, has held off telling us what the final plan is, but he did give us a a plan A, which will be open as normal, a plan B, which will be the hybrid, um, come in a couple days and rotate the kids out, Mm -hmm. or plan C will be remotely. Um, Again, my job works very closely with the kids, just like I know a day and and Talisha does. We have to be face to face with them. However, I do not want us to go back too early because as we know, a school is a playing ground for bacteria and germs. That's right. If we get a virus in there that is as contagious as COVID, it's going to go through a school building just like that. And I'm already high risk. I have asthma and high blood pressure runs in my family. However, I do what I have to do to supplement, take my pills, eat healthy, all of those things. But still, if COVID was to hit me today or tomorrow, it may take me out, (laughs) no lie. And I do not want to risk, I wanna be around. I got a a, a, a daughter who's about to turn 15. I wanna see her graduate. I wanna see her go to college and graduate. Hell, I wanna see her get married and have kids. I can't do that if you're going to put me in the school system back into school too early and we get infected. I work, like I said, I work in a middle school. Each grade level has three or four teams of four teachers. That's about 150 students per each team because every grade level has about approximately 350. So just imagine a teacher or a child come in there who may be asymptomatic. Mm-hmm. Then went through all those classrooms, all mm-hmm. those students. Mm-hmm. We all will have to quarantine for 14 days and be mm-hmm. tested. All mm-hmm. 150 of the students and all the educators that came in contact with them, including me. Because again, I like to be in the midst of the hall transition where stuff go down. I'm right there. Wow. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. And like I tell anyone else, as educators, we put our blood, sweat, and tears into our work, and we have crappy pay. So we know that we're not in it because of the pay. We're in mm-hmm. we're in it because we're passionate, and this was our calling. Mm-hmm. However, I am tired of always putting me and my family second to everybody else. Don't get me wrong. When my kids got me seven and a half, seven and a half hours a day, Monday through Friday, I go above and beyond. But when 410 comes and it's time for me to go home to my family, it's me and my family. 
I'm not thinking about nothing else because if I was to die today or tomorrow, they will replace me. Ooh. All right, we're gonna we're gonna have to listen next, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce. We got we got Ben in here. Happens to us, they'll put a battery in somebody else's back and keep it moving. Who you tell? Hold, hold on a second to listen. Hold on a second to listen. I want to introduce. We got we got DJ Bing here. He's also X Squad affiliate. Rob uh, had to drop to his uh, pick up his daughter. Bing is also an X Squad affiliate. He's an elementary school teacher in DeKalb County. Uh, welcome, Bing. We'll let you weigh in, but I'll let Talisa tell me about the preparation for Cobb County and your thoughts. Um, right now, what uh, they have decided is they're giving parents a choice to go virtual or return. If they go virtual, then they have to commit to the entire semester, that first semester. Okay. And if they change their minds after January, then they can they can send them to school. And then they also say vice versa, if they were in school and they wanted to switch to virtual, they have to commit for that first semester. So I'm, you know, I'm just thinking about the building that I am there's we have uh, at least 800 students and with 800 students on the side of town that I teach, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more than likely all of our kids are coming back to school because wow. we, the neighborhood that we're in is a working class neighborhood and a lot oh. of them are still working. They never stop working. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, more than likely we're going to have a pretty full school and you know, there are some concerns about classroom size and all of those things. But I don't know how all of that's going to work or how, you know, what they're saying to us is that or the superintendent says, because essentially to me, if I have to be a virtual teacher and a classroom teacher, that's two jobs. Right. And if I have two jobs, I want two checks. Hey, <laughs> hey, yes, that would be awesome. But so he was, you know, he did say that he he was he's gonna make it where you know there's gonna be a virtual teacher and and then it's the you know the classroom teachers and it and your child may be taught by somebody in the district virtually. So I you know though that's the plan that they have right now. You have they're giving parents a choice. They're supposed to put up a platform when they were working on it. Where they had when they go online to register that they had to choose they have to certify that they had uh online you know a computer and the internet and all of that they had to prove that before they will even allow them to do uh virtual learning so so i'm thinking that's you know that's that but my question is this or my concern is this too mm -hmm. um it was kind of loosely put because what if um all of a sudden, one day, in the middle of, you know, they didn't, you know, in the middle of you, you're supposed to be on virtual, but you decide, um, I can't make it after the first month. I'm going to send my kid to school, and you send them. My principal's going to take them, and they come in. So little baby shows up at your door. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have to deal with that so there then you then you know and it's still the concern is the academic growth where you are what we are doing virtually compared to what are we doing face to face in the classroom all of those concerns still pop up to me and you know outside of no you know what we were talking about earlier with um just knowing where the kids head space is you know there's a lot that goes on in their minds and i think my biggest concern with my kids not being able to see them face to face was knowing if they were okay because you know it turns into a lot of latch key right. keys and things like that or being left at home with mama's boyfriend Ooh. so so forth and, you know you dealt with some issues like that i'm just speaking from experience of what i've had to deal with this year and it's and since march and it's hard because you for for me i can i say i don't want to take it home but i i carry it here right. and i do take it home because it's hard not to when you have a concern for your babies right. so it's a lot um i'm not sure how all that's gonna work out um i i'm not 
I'm not really ready to go back, but I I'm, I think I'm stuck with I don't have a choice, you wow. know. So the virtual part concerned about are you gonna really learn like you need to? Mm-hmm. We got uh, I'm gonna let Bing let you weigh in. Uh, Angela just came in the chat room. She said this is such a great show and <laughs> panel. I'm excited. I'm related to most of these brilliant black educators. <laughs> yes, that is correct, Angela. So she's in the chat room giving y'all a big kudos, thumbs up, and with the pom poms. A great panel. Y'all are really represent. What's up, Bing? How are you today? Hey, man. What's going on? How are everybody doing today? Hello. How are you? Good, man. All right. All right. Tell me how yeah, the cows were preparing. Say it again. How's, how's the cow preparing for the upcoming school year? What is the choices that the uh, kids get for that? Well, they still kind of um, in the lab a little bit, as we say. Um, they have a board meeting next week because, you know, we was in the middle of uh, selecting a new superintendent. Okay. So a new superintendent started about a week or so ago. And um, they have a board meeting um, next, next week, early next week. And a decision will be finally made there. But they do have some... A couple of choices as first as far as hybrid learning, um, a mix of virtual and um, face-to-face, or either or. So, like I said, we're kind of in limbo, um, just kind of waiting to see what the board decides to put out there. They did um, do a survey, um, in which they selected uh, solicited parents, educators, and um, I guess other family members to participate in the, um, in the survey. Right. to have some input in, you know, in the decision that's going to be made. Okay. Um, as far as me, you know, I'm, I just think it's a lot of unknowns out there um, with the, with the cases still rising. Yep. And now you're trying to conjugate kids, teachers, staff, you know, it's, it's just a lot of unknowns out there. You know, it's a lot of precautions that need to be taken. Um, a lot of precautions need to in preparing school and the, the people that's going to be, you know, actually running the school. Um, it's just a lot of unknowns, you know, um, different protocols um, because I, it's going to be unique cases because each school, uh, you know, is different. You know, each community is a little different. Yeah, we're in the same, you might be in the same system, but, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of independent cases out there. Right. that, uh, you know, require something in a different way. Right. Uh, and, and the DeKalb has such a wide variety. I guess Cobb is the same way, but you got your North DeKalb schools, you got your South DeKalb schools, you know. And like Talisa was saying, the latchkey kids, you know, you probably, I think you have a similar situation with a working class group of people as well mm-hmm. who, you know, I don't know if anybody is at the house. I know you're elementary school, just like Talisa is, so. These uh, latchkey kids, probably, you know, might be a similar situation. What grade do you uh, teach? Uh, uh, fourth grade. Fourth grade. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So nobody's excited to go back. Of course, it wouldn't be at all. It's unknown. Um, a day you being an administrator. Uh, it's a lot of heat on you as far as the school side, but you really don't have much say so because you have, you know what I'm saying, you have the, the school system, which basically dictates what the schools do. Um, we had someone in the chat ask about graduating seniors, like the sentiment of seniors who don't get to have a traditional graduation. We may have that again this year. What was it like for the graduating seniors the past year? their sentiment in there for us um yeah initially when schools closed for about after after a couple weeks if it's setting in Mm -hmm. that's when we started hearing from parents and kids of seniors and once they realized like man i'm not gonna have my prom i'm not gonna be able to finish out my my spring sports you know and do all the stuff, you know, how high school kids was big is getting their college acceptances, you know, getting their scholarships and, and celebrating all that stuff. We didn't have any of that. Right. And so 
then came the graduation, which was a really big deal. Um, what our division did was actually something unique. Um, and we just, we really just looked at what, you know, we didn't reinvent the wheel. We looked at what other people did and what was successful, did some surveys with the community and kind of came up. So we, we held a graduation. We did it in our, um, our, uh, one of our, our stadium for our, our school division. Mm -hmm. And it was drive in um, all of our different high schools and each of them wow. had a different date and time. Um, and the parents could drive in uh, with however many people they could fit in their car. <laughs> Because that's all you could have with you. Wow. Uh, and trust me, people were having buses, limos, you, you name it, they brought it. And stadium? yeah. Wow. And they drove in uh, and they had to park and they let sections of them out. Uh, and they teach, you know, parents and their relatives, they had a standing room and they could walk and stand there. And their kids went over and they were in full cap and gown. They went and got their diploma. We read their name off, they got a name card. Um, before all of that, we prepped it by, we had like a, um, a big celebration. I know at my school, we had like a, a senior week activities. And so we did stuff virtually. And then we had like a drive up thing at the school. We had a DJ outside, uh, parents and kids drove in with their cars. They stopped at different stations. We gave them, you know, bags and we had, a, uh, you know, stuff, um, little doodads and, and their graduation tickets for seniors and all that kind of stuff. Right. And they took that stuff, and that's how they were able to get in to the stadium. And then they walked across stage. We read their name. Their parents are there. And it was more intimate, so they could, like, really applaud them and be close by. Right. And they had a little photo op. Um, we had a big 2020 sign, and so they could stand there and get their picture done. And then, you know, it was like they walked right back on out with their family and got in the car and left. And then we got the next group came in right behind them. Wow. And so – we were able to simulate a, a really intimate and nice uh, graduation ceremony for all of our kids, which was, it was a blessing. Cause at first it was like, we were like everyone else uncertain on what it was gonna look like. Um, now I can tell you while it was nice and great and intimate for the families, for staff and administrators, you know, teachers weren't able to be there. So that, that really was a bummer for them. Um, so we had to limit because of obviously COVID, you know, the number of people who could actually be there and administrate it. Um, it was a long day, you know, one little graduation like that for us. I got out there at 7.30 a.m. I didn't go home till three o'clock in the evening, wow. you know, in the after, late afternoon. So I was there on my feet all day. I was tired where traditionally graduations, you're in there for maybe a couple hours and you're done. This wasn't that kind of party, but it was good. Um, a good shift that we were able to make happen for our families. And it was different. Now, the whole prom thing, yeah, I really felt bad that kids couldn't take part of that. But, oh, right. you know, kids are in, they are um, creative. Uh, what do I can I say? Kids are very creative. Right. They had silent parties, they had where they hooked up at different people's houses. They did their own thing anyway. <laughs> um, but we, we tried to make the whole senior activity as, as much as we could virtually, uh, and celebrate them. So they felt, felt wanted and, and families in, in the community really appreciated it. That's, that's as much as we could do. I'm not even going to get into the grading, the whole, <laughs> we had to laugh. <laughs> we couldn't be really sticklers. I, I'm going to tell you, some people graduated, they're probably, yeah, on the skin of their teeth, winging a prayer. <laughs> I'm just well, you, a whole county, lot of grace. Huh? Cabarrus County, um, you know, we have the Charlotte Speedway here. Yeah. Oh, wow. And so the Charlotte Speedway opened up their doors for each one of our high schools. Um, they all had a day um, to do a virtual drive-by. And the good thing about it was a lot of their teachers were able to participate because the Speedway is so big, they were at different designations. Um, and they had a stage and they had the big screens. Wow. And so the principal, they had it all in order. The principal will call the name, they'll drive up, hand it, they'll get on the big screen. Um, like you said, they were able to bring 
all the people they could fit in their their cars. They decorated their cars. Um, I know some of our high schools put up billboards on some of the main roads going to the high school so people can see, you know, congratulations to class 2020. Um, some schools also did the yard signs for each one of their seniors. Yeah. And far as prom, some of the schools in the um, district got creative and did virtual proms um, so that the kids could still get dressed up because people paid a lot of money to get, especially girls, to get dresses made, the men, to, the young men to get tuxedos rented and stuff like that. So they became very, very creative. I know I was the eighth, I, ro I rotate in my school. So this year coming up, I'll move back down to sixth grade. But this year was eighth grade for me. And um, I was in on the talk about what they were going to do, but really don't know what they did because um, I ended school six six weeks early. I, I took a leave of absence. Okay. Um, so I don't know exactly what they did, but I do know they did put up a video of all the parents who sent in baby pictures or stuff like that. And um, our IT person did a, um, a video that he put on display on our website. So it was it was good that we had the Charlotte Speedway to do um, our graduations. Okay. Wow. <laughs> We're not that savvy, but it's uh, I teach fifth grade, and you know, uh, for us because they're essentially graduating elementary school, so to speak. Yep. Uh, we do try to do something big for them at the end of the school year. And our big thing is that we take a trip. We take an over yep. somewhere and we had planned on going to um, to Pigeon Forge again. Oh, man. Oh, wow. So this trip was planned. Pigeon Forge is so nice. And for side, some of the eight, mm -hmm, our, our whole fifth grade class. So it's like, uh, some of the thing, everything that we paid for, except for the bus company, uh, will give us a refund. So we had oh, to come man. up with something that we could do for them to let them know that we love them, that we miss them, and all of that. So we came up with a uh, a parade. So uh, like a virtual grad, not a virtual, but a a drive by graduation. So um, the parents really got involved and decorated their cars and they, you know, that the kids, you know, hang out the windows, they had balloons and, you know, we just took over the whole school, the perimeter of our school and the school next to us and just kind of all the way around. And so, and just, you know, paraded them out and that's, and, and my principal did a pay for a picture booth for them to go and take a picture, you know, if they wanted to do that. So just some things that we tried to do for them, but it was not uh, really very unusual to try to figure out what to do for them because they were kind of sad because they gotten so used to our big celebration that we do. We do a barbecue. Oh, good. Oh, y'all was getting down. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do a lot. We would have like a, uh, we would have jumpers and, you know, it was like a, it would be like a whole carnival, you know, at the school, but just for that grade level. And all of that we couldn't do for them. So, you know, we tried our best, but it was, you know, it was it was happy and sad all at the same time because it wasn't, you know, you see your babies come through crying and, and stuff like that. It was right. So, 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 so I got a question here. You brought up a topic that made me think about it. And things changed as, you know, we, we progressed through the years. Um, I call it almost like a participation trophy. So... Is it all of y'all educators and the day you actually taught in many levels and, and um, have experience, many years experience and throughout the different uh, levels of school, um, do you feel that with the newer generation of kids that we need to continue to do a celebration? So when you said fifth grade, you got a fifth grade graduation, did you have an eighth grade graduation as well? And then you got the senior graduation. Do y'all feel like this is something that's necessary to continue to motivate kids to, to do Absolutely. Like that? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because and yes. although fifth and eighth grade are not graduations, we term them promotions. And yes. they for for that because moving from elementary to middle school, that's a new milestone. 
You're starting another phase of your life and then high school and then college or trade school. So these are just phases in their life. And we need to have these things to keep the morale up amongst our students. Because right now, I remember growing up, we had a lot of parks and recreation and you didn't have to pay for it. Or if there was a fee, it was very small. We don't have that anymore for our kids. And that's why they're getting into a lot of mischievous things and getting in trouble because they don't have the outlet like we did growing up. Now, I remember the YMCA. That didn't cost anything. Now, it's an arm and leg. I can't even afford that for my own child, let alone what I pay it because it's almost $200 a week for mm. a child to just go from nine to four, whatever their hours are. And a lot of parents don't have that. So yes, any little thing that we can do, we need to do because it helps to motivate them and keep them on track for um, succeeding and moving through you know, the different phases of life. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I've been in middle school and elementary and I did a little high school and those kids really look forward to those milestones. Yep. Um, I know when I was in middle school, um, you know, that's a that's a real big phase in their life. You know, on one minute they want to be a baby, on the other end they want to be grown. You know, one day they come into you crying, one day they might want to cuss you out. You yeah. know. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, and and I and I and I really did enjoy middle school. You know, it was just opportunity for me to move down to elementary. But to get back to what I was saying, um, those milestones do mean a lot. You know, um, so you do you do want to celebrate them. You you want to make sure because those those are also memories too. Yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. that they can look back on and and say, well, you know what, I did accomplish this. Well, you know what, let me go ahead on and take this next step and and finish middle school so I can go to high school. You know, and then it also is is something that younger kids can see seeing their older siblings get promoted mm -hmm. to inspire them to encourage them. You know. Um, I have a daughter that's that just graduated, so I went through the whole thing with the senior, you know, the crying because she missed the prom and you know just just everything. And you know, I have a younger daughter that's coming up behind her, and she was like, "I hope we don't go through this." <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. So, but uh, I think I think celebrating those milestones are very important because uh, you know. Those those celebrations mean some things, and 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 it's it's a, it's a it's a big encouragement to do good. Yes, I would wholeheartedly agree because sometimes you got that student who is on the edge of dropping out, want to mm -hmm. give up, and when they get to that point and they make it, and then they're celebrated, it's like okay, it's not as bad as I thought it was. I think I can hold on a little bit longer, and then I got some educators who are going to push me and not give up on me. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, Talisa. Yes, I right. mm -hmm. my my uh, my computer kept dropping, and so I'm on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed we had your twin sister in for a minute. I said we got two Talisas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so we were actually speaking about uh, accomplishments as far as uh, um, rewarding uh, or or motivating kids with the fifth grade graduation, eighth grade graduation, and then, and then your senior graduation. I said, is that necessary? And, and everybody- I think so. That. I think so. And I, as I did hear uh, someone else say that these are milestones that, you know, that mean a lot to the kids. They feel accomplished because when you move from the elementary setting to middle school, they really think of themselves as, hey, um, really, I'm, I'm really a big kid now. I'm really transitioning from that little kid to um, I'm going to preteen and, and my 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 role in school is going to be different. I'm going to have not just one teacher, but I'm going to have multiple teachers. My responsibilities change. And so all those things that we talk to them about mm -hmm. and me having the experience of being in mi uh, a middle school setting, a middle school teacher coming from and coming and back to uh, the elementary setting, I have I have the knowledge to just talk to them about what they're looking forward to when they move to um, that setting. So I think it is important that they have these milestones, 
Um, I think we don't make it. Um, some pl- some schools do it differently. We don't call it necessarily a graduation. That's why I did it in air quotes, graduation, mm-hmm. but uh, more of a transition and uh, uh, a moving up or a step a step up to your next level. Uh, and that is important. It makes them feel good about what they're doing and what they've accomplished because there are so many different things that um, that I know that our kids get to be involved in. They have um, national um you know, uh, National Elementary Honor Society. They have all those things that, you know, some of the high school students uh, have, and they those things follow them. Their uh, their transition from, you know, that elementary setting, and then the 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 scores that they make on on their uh, tests put them in uh, different classes and different standards, and it just opens opens doors for them. So I think it's important. I do. I agree with everything that was already said. It was already said so eloquently by everybody else. <laughs> the only thing I can add is that it is key and critical to celebrate the developmental milestones at every level, at the elementary level, the middle level, and the high. Because at every level, you have a beginning stage and you have an ending stage for that for that mm-hmm. level. And kids at the beginning stage need to see the end game for that stage and what it should look like because those older kids are examples for those younger students Mm -hmm. Uh, and they need to see that developmental progress. I remember when I was an elementary administrator, you know, we did mentorship. We had our older kids mentoring the younger kids and going to read to those lower level kids Mm -hmm. because they needed to see that level and they needed to pass on that, that, to those kids so they had something to aspire to when they got older. When I was a middle school administrator, we did the same thing. Uh, and those sixth graders needed to see what an eighth grade student, what that looks like, what they should emulate, and and to understand that transition and prep for high school and what that means and what that looks like. And the same thing for when you're not in my high school, we do the same thing with our ninth graders and our 12th graders. And we even have kids who graduated from high school who are in college come back and speak to the seniors because uh, we do we have senior week during the school year. And so those connections and those milestones are so important for kids to help make those connections to their learning because they, they start to understand it's not just about me finishing school and finishing one grade, one grade level after the other, but it's about my development in life. Awesome, awesome. So, next topic. So, our last topic. We're actually going to talk about the future of teaching. Do you see the now that we know that we can do this virtual thing, we can do the online classes, courses, curriculum. Do you feel like the future of teaching has now been changed, and uh, do you see it even developing even more? I do. I do. Um, because although my county has not made a decision on what plan we're going to use, we did receive an email that now they have decided to open up a virtual academy, Mm -hmm. um, which will fall under our um, program choice um, because each one of our high schools have a specialty um, school within a school. So, you know, we have the, um, uh, what is it? Aviation. Mm-hmm. We have where they can go to a program for EMT and fire. Um, so each one of our um, high schools have different um, academies in it. So because of COVID-19, they decided to do a virtual academy. And anyone can apply to the virtual academy just like they would apply to the program choice. But the only thing um, that they haven't released yet is all of the information about it um, because they put it out there, but now parents are reaching out to educators like, okay, well, what is this? I'm like, we don't even know. Um, Mm -hmm. But it does follow under a program choice academy, um, a program choice. And um, I guess for those parents who really, really do not feel comfortable um, with sending their kids back or they found out that their kids thrive more on a virtual setting, now they have that option. Um, so yes, and they're recruiting teachers for it. Hmm. 
Yeah, we uh, we have in in the system I'm in, um, they they have virtual academies, um, a couple of them, and um, in the school system as a whole, um, does a lot through through a virtual um, does virtual learning. Um, we we work through a system called Verge. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's a platform that uh, provides different um, uh, apps. Um, it's uh, you can connect with uh, uh, it's just different things, different applications you can use. Like while while we were um, in quarantine, that's how we could um, communicate with our kids through Verge. Um, it's a platform where you go in and you put your assignments on in on each um, subject, math, reading, um, social studies, science, whatever. And the kids log in and they can see it and you can monitor their progress. Um, you know, you got email, you email back and forth between the two. So we have some things in place. Um, they are gonna um, vamp up some things some, um, just because, you know, it's, it's, you know, because of this, you know. But one of my, my concerns is that I think technology um, has to be in, 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 in the household as a whole right. because we did run in to a lot of situations and circumstances where some, some kids didn't really have internet service or they didn't have computers, you know. So that option for some is not going to be there, you know. So um, we're in a, uh, in a in a place where all middle school, all high school students do get access to to personal computers. Elementary, we do inside the inside the school, but middle school and high school they had the options; they can take it back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but like I say again, you know, you run into those situations where some people don't have um, internet service or you know access to the computer, or it's just one computer and you got multiple siblings. Mm -hmm. Um, a mom, I got, she's a work, she's working from the, the one computer in the house. So she can't really get on with, with mm -hmm. the kids, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, ran into a lot, you know, uh, so, you know, we had to do a lot of hard copies and mailing the, the work out or meet this person or go drop it in their mailbox. So I think technology has to catch up, um, has to be, uh, I guess, a, 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 a even playing field for everyone. Um, yes. I agree. I know if you weren't you weren't on in the beginning, mm -hmm. but what my county did because we do have some very rural areas, they took buses and did hot spots mm. for those uh, families that lived in rural areas and didn't have it. And then I don't know, do you all have Spectrum? Mm, not for me. Okay, so, so yeah, Spectrum, we got Spectrum. Spectrum. Okay, so what Spectrum did out here is that um, they allowed families who did not have an account to sign up for it free. Now, mm -hmm. the catch to that was if you had an existing account, but you was back, you were behind and you hadn't paid, they would not allow you to get it. But if you did mm -hmm. not, if you were in good standing and mm -hmm. didn't have an account with them, they would allow you to open up um, internet uh, for free and they will come and provide you with all the equipment. Yeah, yeah, now we do, they did have like they have services like through Infinity, but you okay. had to inquire about it, and um, you know you can you can get it, but you know some 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 parents just you know for whatever reason would when go through the steps to, to you know to apply for those types, of, and you know sometimes it's you know the grief of letting somebody know some some of the personal ends and how what's going on in their home. Right, mm -hmm. totally understand. Mm -hmm. But what you all use sounds like our Canvas and Google Classroom. Yeah, Google, yeah. Google, Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so ours did that. But also in the state of Cal, um, in the state of North Carolina, they also have what's called North Carolina Virtual School, which is mm -hmm. under the Department of Education here. So that's another platform. But a lot of students use that when they're doing homeschool, mm -hmm. or they want to take an online class that is not offered at the high school level. Right, right. What is that? Yes. Um, North Carolina Virtual School. Okay. So it's an option also for high school students. So if there's an elective that a high school doesn't offer, mm -hmm. 
they can take that online course through North Carolina Virtual School. Or if you are a student whose school is just not your thing, going into a school building, you could take all your courses on North Carolina Virtual School. It's almost like homeschool. Okay, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. All right, so Lisa? Yes, um, I think that uh, with the onset of where we are with technology right now, a lot of the schools are transitioning more towards technology. I know that in Cobb, we have our own system called uh, CTLS, mm -hmm. and uh, which is connected to Synergy, which is you know where you find the grades and, and all, a parent view and, and so forth. Um, mm -hmm. There's also a platform like I think he was mentioning Verge. We mm -hmm. use Clever. Uh, yeah. And Clever has all of the apps where we make assignments and so forth, along with CTLS and Office 365. So they're all all those things that have been put into place already uh, in Cobb. I, I think you know they're kind of they've been already kind of leaning towards that. But you know, um, I do agree that the biggest issue is does everyone have access? Can everybody do? Because it's awful hard to do things on a cell phone um you know it's not like them getting on the cell phone and playing on playing with their game or getting on their little uh apps like a house party or what have you they actually have to do some work um and that that you know that leads to you know making it hard for them to get things done and two there is what comcast or xfinity that has the free program but you know it's the same as what shamika was saying about how you know they had a previous bill they can't get the service if it hasn't been cleared and then you know some just won't won't go and do uh what's necessary, what's necessary. Because, you know, mm -hmm, because they don't want you to know too much about their business or they lack of understanding or, or what i find with a lot of the kids that i teach is that the kids are uh dual language yep. and the parents are not so they don't they they don't if they don't understand something they don't want to fool with it right mm -hmm. you know you deal with that too so um but i do think that um because mm -hmm. of this is is pushing schools to really uh look at what they have as far as technology and how they're going to uh make it available for everybody i do think that with the, the middle school and the high school having access, more access to taking um, computers and so forth home, mm -hmm. it would, I think with the older grades, especially fourth and fifth, that we should have that access to because we do a lot of the same things. I know especially in fifth that they would do in middle school. So I think that's important, but we don't. I know we have it in the classroom, me being, um, uh, uh, using a lot of technology. I have a I have my own iPad card in my classroom, but um, I can't let them take 40, I mean, release 40 iPads and, you know, having to be responsible for that and right. and having to share, you know, the, the computers with 150 other students. That, there's a lot of things that are, are going into play that we have to think about, but um, I just think that, you know, there's going to have to be a, there's going to have to be a lot, there's going to have to be a lot more done um, in order for it to work fluidly and um at the best interest of the students and the teachers okay a day got to cut out so i'll let you get your word in right quick a day for you roll out uh no i just i agree with what everyone said that the reality is you know there's there are virtual learning platforms but you still need educators to run them you still need uh folks to give that instruction because mm -hmm. uh, the computer alone is not enough uh, and so the, the field is wide open for that. The blessing on the other end is um, it, it has helped because there is a national teacher shortage. Uh, so the virtual learning piece helps bridge that gap a little bit. Uh, and the second piece is parents have learned at home that they have had to learn how to structure their homes differently mm -hmm. um, in order to meet the needs of their children um, all throughout the day. Uh, and so it is caused, I've just seen so much, even on a national scale and even in the news, how people now appreciate educators more for what they deal with every day, because now they're seeing firsthand. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a, that's the blessing on the other side that's come out of all of this. So I think that the scope is gonna continue to evolve for educators 
um, and they're they're still going to be needed, but it's gonna it's gonna start to look differently. I know a lot of our teachers are now are, especially the the older ones who weren't as versed in virtual education, have had to really step up, and they learned a lot and they've enjoyed it um, because it's 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 helped us grow and learn professionally as well. But thank you for your time. I enjoyed being on the panel. Hey man, we appreciate thank you. Sharing the day. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. So uh, I'm gonna tell you one thing I found out too is that <laughs> you know with, with virtual learning, mm -hmm. I saw a couple of cases the the scenario whereas some kids found out how much their parents actually know. I had ran into some wow. cases where I had a I had a mom. You know, was like, look, you know, to be honest, I can barely read myself. Mm. You know, so, you know, it, that that virtual learning it has its it has its good. And, you know, it also has some things that need to be considered. You know, um, because I, in this particular case, it's like, you know, I'm assigning these assignments, and when I talk to the mom, she's like, well, he's getting on the computer. I'm like, uh. <laughs> but I'm, and right now, I, he not, he's not turning in anything. Mm. So you know, he more thing was he he was getting on the computer, but he was doing what he wanted to do. Exactly. And when mom come in, he'll just put it on 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 the assignment. And as soon as she leave, you know, and she was you know she didn't didn't know how to go on and check it. So once we you know find that out, and she just kind of opened up. You know, she has a, a daughter. He has an older sister that kind of stepped in a little bit to help out, but. Yeah, I had a couple of cases where you know you, you know they they say well you know I can't teach this new math you know yeah I understand. well I can't teach it either and I'm an educator so my daughter has a year round tutor even in the summertime every Tuesday at four o'clock so I'm right with that mama and I'm educated uh, y'all can have that math it's not new math it's not new math. But the way they're teaching it is new. Yes. Because when I sat down with my daughter, I know we changed the subject, but when I sat down with my daughter and showed her how I did it, it was two different ways. And she was like, how did you get that? I said, that's old school math. And <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. I teach old school math. <laughs> well, I wish she was in your class because this new era math or new way of it, I can't do it. So, yeah, she got a tutor. You know, I told you what my answer to some of that stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right with that parent. I can't teach the math. But I agree because I said that earlier being that a lot of our parents are not even educated themselves. So if they're not educated, they can't teach their children. But on a behavior level, I've had parents reach out to me and said, I just I just suspended Johnny after two days of school. I said, oh, so now you get the Johnny that we get. <laughs> so they, like you said, they do appreciate us more mm -hmm. now than looking at us as babysitters. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, yeah. me being an IT cybersecurity guy, I'm, I'm concerned about how these kids actually getting over the games and things that are non educational. I'm like, there should be some kind of proxy or something that keeps them from going to certain websites, but I guess they got well, way in our it. school, they do. So we can block. So we have what's called, oh Lord, I forgot the name of it. But it, it's, they find ways around it. <laughs> it's some type of thing that um, the county paid for. Right. And the teachers have access to everybody's computer and can see what they're gone, what um, yeah. they're on. History. And so if they see somebody on a website, the first thing they'll do is send them a message. I see you, get off. Mm -hmm. If they mm -hmm. don't, then they can block it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have something similar, but you know, it, it's just a point that these got some <laughs> kids that are mind, sad. Yeah, the minds, boy, they 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 find a way. Yeah, <laughs> they need to go with technology. I tell mine, I pull up, uh, I just pull up where it it has a folder where it shows a list of all the a folder for each student. I say, you see these files right here? I know every move you make. Mm -hmm. So if you go on something you don't have in the business, I'm gonna know. I said, listen, I like my pay to the order of those. You get on nothing, you don't have no business. Right. You know, just tell them like that, and so they was mm -hmm. like, 
And so if I see somebody had been on something, and because they don't, they don't shut it down. Mm-hmm. And so I was watching it the next day, and it was like, oh, somebody. I said, I said, you either need to fess up, or I'm gonna have to just go and put you on blast. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go, you know. So of course, you know, but you know, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I randomly like, I'd be like most of the time, but they do try it. I promise yeah, you, they do. And they're I randomly to have something minimized, and then supposed to be working on something else, and they have it minimized. And like you said, your your uh your student was doing with his mom. They do it at mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I randomly like I might say, okay, today I'm checking history. Get an itch in there. Oh, Come man. on up. Yeah, I randomly pick mm-hmm. Let me see your history. And I be like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. That right and, and, and I'm working with kids younger, so you know some of the stuff that they they do going every now and then you have one that step out of bounds and you're like whoa, but they you know they do silly stuff like changing they they uh home screens screen save stuff like that. But like when I was in middle school, boy, oof. oh yeah, middle school, you see uh, some porn, mm-hmm. you see all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, mm-hmm. honey. Yeah. Honey. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah, fifth grade. She got stories. Fifth grade, fifth grade oh, stories. Are crazy. I, now I had a third grader that was, you know, doing uh doing porn, getting porn. I had a middle, middle schooler school. who was bringing his daddy porn books that he found in his drawer at school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so middle school, you see it all. Mm-hmm. Fifth grade, honey. Yeah, fifth grade yeah. too, because that's where it starts. Mm. <laughs> they going through changes. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. <big> changes. <laughs> I'm told you what my answer is. I'm glasses crooked. Who you telling? <laughs> <laughs> I tell them all the time. Y'all gonna make my uh, alter ego from South Central come out? They was like, we don't want to see that, Miss Cole. I said, no. okay. South Central. <laughs> now, listen, that was your, that was your, that's your initial too. I see. Mm-hmm. And you know, I keep it real with my kids. Don't have me go South Central on you. And they be like, you from Compton? Yes, I lie. Because <laughs> you know, they see all boys in the hood and all of that. Yep, uh-huh. Try me. Hey, listen. So I appreciate y'all coming through. Definitely. This is awesome. This is, you know, I know we got some uncertainties that we're dealing with coming up. Uh, this from the top down. Y'all are pretty much having to adapt with whatever is thrown your way. And it, like they say, teachers should be one of the highest people paid. You know what I mean? I don't know what's what's up with the world and how they structured this. You know, entertainers and sports people making all this money, but teachers being on the lower end of things. You know, we, we our priorities are all messed up here. But listen, y'all have been, you know, what I'm saying, very commendable for what you've done through the year, what you dealt with, what you, you know, having to prepare for for the future. And I really appreciate y'all coming and sharing your thoughts and and and, and ideas and, and feelings and just laying it out on the line here. And I know everybody personally, so y'all really held it to a professional level. Didn't really get to say what you really want to say, how you want to say it, because you're representing yourself and your school district and all that. So I understand. I got it. Um, but I really appreciate y'all coming through. Y'all want to say something before we end um, before we close out, I'll let you. Thank you for um, thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Um, it's good to hear that we're, you know, my county is not alone in this, that everybody is feeling, if not the same, similar. So it was good to hear from other um, educators in different states and counties. So thank you so much for the panel. Yeah. yeah, and you gave a day a whole coast. He he's Newport News, Virginia. I think you said Newport Beach, California. <laughs> oh, I probably did. <laughs> Thinking about California, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I appreciate y'all for coming through. Thank y'all for participating and for you know what I'm saying continue doing what you're doing. I pray for y'all for the upcoming Thank season. You. I mean, a uh, season upcoming uh, school semester. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we got all this behind us, and you know what I mean. We can. I'm on the lookout for me an astronaut costume or something. There you go. <laughs> I know. Oh, somebody posted it in one of the teacher groups. It's a hazmat suit on Amazon. I'm gonna put it in my basket. I think I might be in it. 
Yeah. Yes, right. yes. All right. Thank y'all. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yes, yes. All right, yes, yeah, so y'all have reached. <clears throat> it was exciting, exciting, exciting. Uh, great information here. We had a lot of people who were able to uh, to basically, um, you know, express what they wanted, uh, lay out the landscape of their school systems, and it's crazy, man, to 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 think of the things that they got to go through, and. Uh, the humiliation that they got a lot of frustration especially when it comes to school systems and the kids and the administration other teachers the the uncertainty of things that they're going to be facing um what's going on man you got my son in here i know you're off camera what's good man okay you just, just want to come see what the setup it is yeah uh he pretty much knows most of the people here on that panel uh, but yeah, that was an awesome, awesome, awesome show, man. I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the uh, the topic. It was really educational uh, to know um, how each district, city, state, whatever, teacher style, philosophies, how everybody really um, felt in regards to those things and the similarities that everybody had as far as thought process being in different areas. But you know, still having that same common bond as an educator, a positive educator. So yeah, man, I'm looking at, uh, I wanna say big ups, man. I wanna say big ups to those who've been joining me here on YouTube. Shout out to Mocha Bella, shout out to my wife, Angie. Shout out to Big E, shout out to uh, Sluggo. Shout out to my man, uh, my brother, Rasan. That's the other twin of a day who was on early and then also shout out to my man Jims, you know what I'm saying, rocking uh real people music of this thing called marriage. And I already said shout out to my wife, I gotta give her another shout out because she actually came up with the idea. She was like she's my she's my hidden producer, but she said, Hey, why'd you do a show on uh COVID nineteen and educators? We know educators say so yes we do. So kudos to her man, kudos for for her helping to silently put this thing together. Big ups. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Love it, love it, love it. Um, we, uh, like I said, we now on mobile app. We're on x uh mobile app that you can find in the different app stores. You can find it on the websites, x affiliate dot com or xyradio.com a lot of good content um we we um we just keep growing man you know what i mean great content great shows uh personalities we probably added on i guess five six shows from the top of the year and these guys are hunger hungry uh running with that torch and i'm just gonna keep building man keep building keep doing what i do loving what i do uh, let me see if I can actually get I got one of my guys uh, who's coming up next and that's uh, DJ period I usually I usually bring him on last couple of minutes of the show to see what they got because just two black brothers has a indie rapper tournament that they're doing and it's it's been pretty good man has a, a, a great uh, buzz going about it a lot of participation especially from those artists who are, uh, you know, saying vying to get that that ending championship prize. I think they get two hundred fifty dollars. But let's see if I can get them on right quick. Like I said, I want to thank before I bring him on. I want to thank my educators. I want to thank a day, my brother, representing Newport News City Schools. I want to thank Shamika. Like I said, she's representing Carabra, Car Carabas. I can't never say it. <laughs> it's basically a uh, suburb of the Charlotte area. Um, thanks, Shamika, for you actually coming through as well. I want to thank my sister-in-law, Salisa, who is representing Cobb County. I want to thank one of my X squad affiliates, radio hosts, Rob Calloway, who was on. He had to actually uh, drop off, pick up his daughter. 
That's Rob Callaway with the HBCU Report. He's also representing DeKalb County. And then lastly, you had my man DJ Bean, who came in as well, representing DeKalb County as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me give y'all some applause as well. Yes, yes, yes. They got an audio podcast for you on video. I don't even know what applause you're talking about. <laughs> We yeah, have an audio podcast at the same time as a video co- podcast. So definitely subscribe. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Subscribe to X Squad Radio. We are on YouTube. You can also directly subscribe to me, Kicking It With Kesey. I am Kesey, K-Y-S-I-I. Let everybody know, man. I try to keep these topics engaging. Uh, I may talk to business owners, motivational speakers, music artists, family members. Might just talk to you. If, you t- if you're interested, I want to talk to you. So, <laughs> listen, if you're bored, I want to talk to you. No, I'm true. But for real, I like to talk. So, conversation is what I specialize in. And that's why it's kicking over KC. Let me see if I can get my man DJ Period on one moment. We'll, we'll get him on and uh, see what he's talking about. Hello? DJ Period, what's good? Ziggy Ziggy Period, what's good with you, man? What's up? up? Hey, man, just wrapping up my educators and COVID-19 show. So we had a bunch of educators on, and uh, they were speaking about the past school year and the upcoming school year. So uh, I wanted to definitely give a couple minutes handoff before y'all brothers start up with your show. Man, you could have, man, we, we ain't even going on tonight. Oh no, really? Not doing a show. Yeah, anymore. we no, nah, we had yeah, we had to do so you know we had this other we got this tournament thing going. Right. But they gotta do it earlier with the with the guest with the guest judges. They gotta do it earlier. So we okay. went on at eight today, but we was only on for an hour. Oh. I was like, shoot, just because because I didn't let you know, I was probably gonna load up a uh load up a music file for for the show. Yeah, you can fire up, man. That's cool. That's cool. You can do it yeah. anything, man. So so we'll do an on-demand mix, my man DJ Period. So be sure to check it out. After this show, you'll see that it'll be on demand. Just go to xyradio.com. It'll be the top. Yes, sir. Let's files. get it. Yeah, man. So how's that tournament going? Or how has it been going? It's, this one, it's not too bad. We already in the second round. Uh, we just finished the second round today. We got the third round uh, Sunday. It's just 16 rappers. You know, they... They, we, we, it's two, it's a two hundred dollar prize. So if you know anybody that, uh, we don't, we, we starting another one on the twenty seventh. So if you know any independent artists that probably want to get in it, uh, let me know, man. We, okay. We already got like eight so far for the next one, but we got uh, shoot, man, y'all should be on there uh, Sunday. We got the uh, beat nut uh, judging. Woo wee! Yeah, man, beat nuts. Uh, I, yeah. I, I, I love it. Yeah, the girl. The girl who we got on there with us, man, she like red man and met the man like social media manager. So and she like real yes, close to them. I've seen her. I saw. I'm seeing her. Damn. Yeah. So man, she got the beat nut. She got the beat nut dude to come through. And then I got the uh, dude. He's the rap with the locks named Jay Hood. He gonna come on for the start of the uh, of the second show we doing on the 27th. He gonna be the guest judge for the first round. Heat. That's that heat. That's that heat. I was like, yeah, yeah. come on through. Is, 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 but yeah, is we'll. That, is that my uh my son out there tripping, man? Yeah, yeah, your son oh, right here acting goodness, up. Man. Come on. He ain't getting no attention. No, he ain't getting he, no he's attention. Like, he's like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> nah, he's funny. He getting bigger. Crawl down. <laughs> he, he crawling now. Is he crawling? Yeah, with the one leg. He's trying to get it down. <laughs> <laughs> he got the one leg far right now. <laughs> wow. That is nah. awesome, bro. Yeah, let your wife know he's doing all right. <laughs> yeah, she love she love that little boy there. He got the best profile and the best demeanor. <laughs> he got the That's what I said. He got his own, I gotta make him his own little Instagram account or something. That's right. That is right. Yeah, make yeah, daddy some money. Yeah. 
That is awesome. All the other kids on there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's. I mean, <laughs> listen, you got some real entertaining kids around there, man. Even uh -huh. your son, I, I love the little videos y'all do together. That is awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah, he 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 read he read so good. He read like a second grader, third grader. Hey man, they I can tell that brilliant. They brilliant around there. They get that from their mama though. <laughs> <laughs> now they get it from me. They get it from you? Yeah. I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. I don't know about that, sir. Uh -huh. I don't know about that. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> but everything good on your end? Hey, man. We're good, brother. We are good. Had an awesome show. Um, COVID, man. It's crazy. You up in New York City, man. I don't know. I mean, I know y'all number. Yeah, it's starting, it's not, I guess they're saying it's dying down a little bit here, but. Yeah. It's picking back up now, though. Right, and uh, it was it was we were able to laugh at Florida and Texas a little bit. What? So your older son is is he kindergarten? What is he? What grade? He gonna start? Uh, yeah, he starting kindergarten. Well, whatever school starts, but he starts what's the kindergarten. Plan? And what's the plan? What's the plan for Brooklyn? I think they got the fall for sure. They're gonna be going remote. So it's all virtual. There's no choice because we got right down here in a lot of our districts. You got choice: either go to school or virtual. So it's straight. They virtual. shut it down for the fall there too. No, they're doing choices. You got you got virtual, you got attend school, and you got hybrid. Those are the options. Uh -huh. some, some are some of our counties. Oh, I don't know. Man. That might change, but that's what yeah. it is right now. Yeah, it's smart. It's smart to shut it down for the rest of the year, I think. I think so, too. Yeah, because all them kids running around doing all that. I mean, even though I don't, I don't care about a lot at of that level. Huh? Especially at that level. Yeah, yeah definitely. Cool? Come on, man. That's a petri dish. You don't want them kids job. passing that stuff around like that. Not at all. And they play, they play so close to each other. They talking about social distance. You can't social distance no kindergartners. <laughs> Not at all. They don't even know what that means. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not at all, sir. Yeah, man. Is he is he uh is he over there next to you? I'm trying to put you on hangouts so I can see the baby, but I ain't gonna mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I call him a little baby dragon, he be screaming but no fire come out. Listen, uh, I'm about to turn around and turn you into a video call. Trying to see the baby. We trying to see the baby. Yeah. I said, this the baby dragon. He be he be screaming, but no fire come out. <laughs> be working on the fire. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, man. Oh. So, uh, that, so your next show, when are y'all, your next show, Sunday? Sunday, yeah. Same regular time. Okay. That is Sunday yeah, at 5 o'clock. We'll be on there. You should stand the time. XYRadio.com. Oh, yeah, Bob sure Clark, time. Yep, 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 yep. All right, man. I'm going to let you get All some right. daddy time in and you get your mix uh, set up. And yes, sir. All right, bro. All right, appreciate you. All right, yep, more. Yep, yep, yep. That's your boy, DJ Period. Yeah, man. I, uh... Like I said, I appreciate y'all coming through. It's always a pleasure. Five years of counting. Your boy. I went from one show to 30 shows. An extension of me. XY Affiliates. XYRadio.com. Be sure to continue to check us out. Tune in. Get the mobile app. Tell a friend. Tell a relative. Color cover. We appreciate y'all. Thank you. Be safe and God bless. And I'll see you next week. Be sure to subscribe to me on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook Live. You can check me on the audio as well, Spotify. I Heart Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Me or my squad. Thank y'all. I'll talk to you later.
Changing listening habits.